Hello, my name's David, and in this video, I thought I'd show you the workflow that I use when I want to sharpen an image. And with this particular image, we're also going to enhance the texture. But there's a problem. You cannot sharpen a soft image, but more on that just a little bit later. Now, the first thing I always do is open up my snapshots panel. If you go down to add snapshot, it's now going to ask for a name. I'm going to call this uh, something very simple, which is finished. Next, head up to document. We're going to go down to flatten. Now, it doesn't matter how many layers I got in the layer stack. It could be one, two, it could be multiple layers. I always do the same thing. I'm going to flatten it, which puts all those layers into a pixel layer. It just makes life a little bit less complicated. Next, decide what you want to do with your image. Head back up to document, resize. Now resize it for whatever purpose you want. I'm going to keep this as a very large print just so we can see it in the video. So heading down to inches, you can see there's the size in inches. There's the height in inches. Showing it here, 300 DPI. If you're using this for email, if you're using it for a website, keep it at 300 DPI as well. That really doesn't matter. And there is the pixel dimension. Now I'm going to keep this large. I'm going to use it as an A3 print. So I'm going to use 50, not 115, a bit too much. Let's try it again. And there it is, 15. There is no need to put IN for inches. There is no need to change the height. Why? Because the two are linked. So as soon as I press enter or return, in goes IN and there it is. There's the new height, 10 inches. It has dropped down from 10.88. Looking down here, there is our new width and height, 300 DPI and our new pixel dimension. Resampling, I'm using Lansos 3, non-separable. Give it a try. It is really good. Clicking on resize and there it is. Next, sharpening, or should I say, we're not sharpening. Let's head down to live filters. This is the category they call sharpening. Clarity, I will come back to this one. High pass, now this is adjusting the frequency, high frequency, low frequency, it's adjusting that, which makes it appear to look sharper. Now my favorite, which is unsharp mask. Now even the name, unsharp, makes it a little bit strange, doesn't it? So let's just lift it up. It's put itself in as a child. Let's just unfold it. And if I zoom in, Command 1, Control 1 will take me to 100%. I'm going to press down and just press the space bar to move myself into this position. Right, so what have we got? Well, we have got Radius, Factor, Threshold. What do they do? Well, think of the radius as your pixel and around this we're going to go out and I always use one pixel so we're going to come out one pixel around our pixel in our image and what we're going to do with this to make it appear to look sharper is we're going to use the factor slider now this is contrast and it's adjusting the contrast between the pixels which make it look sharper or should we say crisper taking it to this sort of position here would probably be the maximum I would take it to for the video. I am going to take it a little bit further so we can see exactly what's happening. Yes, this all looks nice and crisp. The cathedral tower here looks really good and the rest of it as well. The remaining slider threshold. What does this do? Well, think back to your pixel and your pixel around it. We've adjusted the contrast. This is now going to feather between those two pixels and feathering as you start to take it up you'll notice the image turning soft again you can take it all the way there it is useful it could be useful should i say on some portraits the times i've used this i could count on probably one finger so i'm going to leave it parked on zero percent let's click the little red button to accept it there it is job done Command zero, control zero will take us to fit on screen. Now we have sharpened, or should I say, we've adjusted the contrast and made it look sharp for every single pixel from top to bottom, from side to side. Not what you want to do with some images. In fact, I rarely sharpen the entire picture. So next is make sure under colors, you've got the default colors. If you've got any other color, press D on the keyboard. Head over to the toolbox. 
pick up your paintbrush. With the brushes, I'm just going to click on my brush panel. I'm going to scroll down. I'm on the basic brushes. Let's go down to the soft brushes, round soft, 120 pixels. That will do nicely. A little bit small, so I'm going to use the right hand square bracket. Let's take it up in size. Now, in with this is a mask. You can't see it. It's hidden. If I press X on the keyboard, that's going to put black as the foreground color. Let's take a look. There it is. And if I bring my brush over that sharpened area of water, you can see it becoming softer. So let's click down. Let's go over that. You can see the mask has appeared. That is the line I've put in. So we can be a little bit selective in what we want sharp in our image, or should I say crisper in an image? I keep saying that word and we shouldn't use it. Right, just come in over this area here. Now, sometimes you might want to make it just a little bit uh, crisper. And if you got to opacity, this is where you can control it. For example, if you want to make it half as sharp, just press, sorry, crisp, press five on the keyboard. We can now come over this area of the water. Just let me come over these light reflections here. And I'll show you how this looks in just a moment. And there it is. So we've taken that down to half a sharp or 50%. Right, let's go to the mask. You can bring the mask forward. So press and hold down Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. Now click on the mask. There it is. Black, this is 100%. The gray, this is 50%. So you can see the difference. If you were to go over it again, you can see we've now taken that to 100% because it's 50 times two. I can work that one out. Right, clicking back on the mask, pressing Alt or Option, back it goes. If I just switch it off and on, there's the difference it makes to the image. Looks really good, doesn't it? But there's something else we can do. And if you've got a landscape, if you've got anything with texture in it at all, give this one a try. It's amazing. Head back down to Live Filters, scroll down, go back to the sharpening. The other one I mentioned was Clarity. Clicking on this, it puts it on its own layer, which is fine. Let's just lift it up. OK, what do we got here? Well, we got one slider strength. That's all we've got. Why is this under sharpening? Well, if I take it back this way, it can make it look a little bit softer. If I take it to the right, look what this does to the image, taking it all the way over to 100 percent. That does a fantastic job. Look at that. That is quite amazing. I can switch off the unsharp mask, and I can switch this one on. And you can see it does a really good job on the foreground, but overall, I think the two work better together. Right, with the exception of the sky, let's dive in. Command one, control one. Always go to 100% of the image. There is no need to go any further. 100% is your viewing distance. As such, looking around, I like what it's done with the Brickwork, I love what it's done with the foreground here. It's even enhanced that lighting effect. That is terrific. Not sure I like what it's done to the sky. OK, let's click to accept it. Command zero, control zero. Let's go to fit on screen. Right, the next step has got to be my favorite way of applying a filter. Doesn't matter if it's a sharpening filter. Doesn't matter if it's any effect. This method is tremendous. We are going to be painting it in. And for that, we will use the hide all mask. Where is it? Well, it's hiding in our clarity layer. Press hold down command on a Mac. Press hold down control on a PC. Now press the letter I. There's the mask I was telling you about. And it's black. Right, pressing X on the keyboard. Puts white as a foreground color. Bring in the brush out. Let's take it up in size. If I bring it over this area, you can see I've got 50% opacity. Luckily, I remember that pressing zero takes me to 100%. You can see the effect. OK, let's come over this area here. Don't forget, I've got a soft edge brush. That's allowing me just to feather this little bit here. Once you've done that, you can come to the mask. You can press hold down alter option. Click on the mask. There it is. You can go over it Again, like this so you can work live on the mask. The beauty of this is if you've done it and you see these sort of black lines here, go over it and you can make sure you have got the entire area covered. 
that should be pretty good. Incidentally, if I press X on the keyboard, I can also just drop that down like this. There. Right, coming back over, press Alt or Option, clicking down. Make sure, press X on the keyboard, you go back to white so you can continue. The brickwork, I am just going to bring the brickwork out there, here on this old warehouse and this warehouse here. I'm not going to do these. Let's zoom in, Command 1, Control 1. I've got a little bit of an idea. When it comes to the sky, I like the definition it brings to the clouds. I do not like the noise. So I'm going to press, as we did before, let's go for 7, 70%. Let's see what that does. Now let's try 6, 60%. That looks better. Got definition, but I haven't got the... There. You can just see the way those clouds, that looks really good. Bringing it back to fit on screen. If I just press, there it is. There's the before, there's the after using clarity. Here it is with the unsharp mask as well. If I switch off this, you can see the way that the clarity is working. And uh, as I said, using that hide on mask, it's got to be on my favorite. That's the way I use it uh, with virtually all the sharpening effects that I apply. Notice the way I use the word effects. Click on add snapshot, call it what it's going to be used for. Give it the size as well. Press enter or return to apply it. If we go back to finish, if I click on restore snapshot, there it is with all the layers. Notice how it's gone back to its pre sharpening effect. Now if I click on this one, there it is after. So we've got the, let's go back to finished and before and click on it. So it's highlighted the after. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. Receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.